going to do a video on the sin of polygamy. I read this thing in the news. Apparently the state of Utah is voting with the, you know, the Mormon church there. They're voting to decriminalize polygamy. And uh, they got a lot of support. The bill got a lot of support in the Republican, majority Mormon Republican Senate. And they're saying it'll probably get some opposition in the Democratic, you know, the House or whatever. I don't know how the whole thing works, but it just shows how this is the, the fruit of Mormonism. They're trying to legalize polygamy. But a lot of people say, well, the Bible condones polygamy. Well, we're going to see about that. What does the Bible say about marriage? What is, what is marriage in the eyes of God? What is the marriage that is acceptable to God? And people will say, well, the Old Testament prophets, they did polygamy. Yeah, um, look at all the cases of polygamy. They always ended up in disaster. You know, they never ended up well. That's why God said that marriage is, you know, these two become one flesh. I'm going to show you the verses where it talks about that. Because every time there's polygamy in the Bible, it never ends well. It always ends in disaster. So I'm going to show you what the Bible says about marriage. 1 Corinthians and if you have a Bible, open your Bible and turn to, like, don't just listen to me talking. Actually, open your Bibles and turn to the verses, too. Uh, make, make sure that I'm not just, you know, making stuff up or misquoting Scripture. Actually, look in the verses with me. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 to 3. Now, concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is not good for a man to, sorry, not good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, not good at reading. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, singular, and let every woman have her own husband, singular. Uh, let the husband render unto the wife, again, singular, due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband, singular. So wait a second, is the husband, the wife, singular? Hmm, interesting. Because I, I read this, this uh, cult over in, in America, this uh, a true church, they, they believe in a work salvation. They think that polygamy is okay. And they, they have on their website, you know, polygamy is fine. Well, what is the marriage that's acceptable to God? The wife, the husband. Hmm. What does God think about marriage? It's one man, one woman. Not two men or, or two women, you know, not sodomite marriage, you know, not incest, which is a, a, a sibling relationship. One man, one woman. Ephesians 5.31 For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. We see this thing again. These two, and we're going to see this over and over again. These two become one flesh. So where does God permit more than one wife? He doesn't. Genesis 2.24 Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Again, we see this thing of, the, of these two men and women coming together becoming one flesh. Not hard to understand. Now what does Jesus say about marriage? And and. You're going to see that Jesus pretty much affirms what God wrote in Genesis. Matthew chapter 19, verse 4 to 5. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that, sorry, that he which made them in the beginning, male, or sorry, he, not good at reading, made them at the beginning, made them male and female? I guess God's not for transgenderism. Uh, and said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twine, these two, shall be one flesh. So again, we see this thing, God is only uh, for, Jesus, the Son of God, is affirming the Old Testament by saying these two are one flesh. Mark chapter 10, verse 7 to 8. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twine shall be one flesh, so then they are no more twine, but one flesh. So we see this theme over and over again, these two become one flesh. This, the uh, polygamous marriage that's going on over in Utah is, is wicked. You know, if you read in Leviticus, talk, it even condemns polygamy by name. I'm going over most of the marriage in this video. But there are verses where it condemns actually taking more than one wife. I actually just mentioned the verses right now. I didn't have this in my notes. But in Leviticus chapter 20, verse 14, in Leviticus 18, 17, it condemns taking, it says, you know, take a, a mother and her daughter. So you're taking two spouses. Condemns that. It says it's wickedness in the eyes of God. And the only marriage that God affirms is one man and one woman. Now, what does God think about bishops? Are bishops and deacons, are they allowed to be polygamists? Well, let's see about that. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. A bishop must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. So the, so the deacon, the bishop, and you're going to see this with the deacon too, the bishop is the husband of one wife. So here's the thing. If God's okay with polygamy, why does he not allow the bishops to be polygamists? It doesn't make any sense. God is not for polygamy. And then what about deacons? 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own houses well. 
So again, one, one wife, the husband of one wife. So God forbids polygamists to be deacons and bishops, you know, or pastors, whatever you want to call them. So to answer, to answer the question, is God okay with polygamy? Does the Bible condone polygamy? Well, the answer is the Old Testament prophets did it, but it never ended well. It always ended in disaster. And you see this theme over and over again, the, these two become one flesh. God is not for a polygamous marriage. The only marriage he affirms is one man and one woman. And I'd even go so far as to say that while polygamy is currently illegal here in Canada in all provinces and territories and all states in America, I, I would go as far as to say that Christians should actually support these laws against polygamy. Because some people will say, you know, I don't know about that. You know, Christians ought to support laws against polygamy. That simple. God is for one man and one woman. These two become one flesh. So yeah, polygamy is a sin in the eyes of God. It's wickedness. So don't be deceived by those pro-polygamous stuff or any, any, anyone comes to you and says polygamy is okay. Just show them these verses. You know, the husband, the wife, these two become one flesh. You know, the husband of one wife. God is for one man and one woman only. So... That'll be it for this video, a bit of a shorter video, but just wanted to get this out there in response to this uh, Utah thing of, of them trying to legalize polygamy. It's wickedness, and it's, per it's a perversion of God's marriage. So anyway, God bless you. Goodbye.